Our next guest is the CIO of Catalina Marketing. Now talk about big data. This, this company works with a who's who of packaged good companies, retailers to deliver personalized coupons at the checkout counter and on the internet and just in time. They're dealing with massive amounts of data. Now even though they didn't give me a, a cool hat, I will still bring out the CIO, Eric Williams. Thank you, Chris. Well, good afternoon. Thank you all for uh, basing, placing yourself between me and lunch. All IT people know, though, there's only one worse place to be, and that's between you and drinks. So this is the needs for speed. The item that Information Week focused on for Catalina about uh, now August of last year was big data. And it's a very interesting topic. A lot of you have heard about big data in the market. Many of you have big data. Um, as you notice on the slide itself, I started with the idea of the good, the bad, and of course, the ugly. But the question that I get asked more than anything else is, do I really need to do this? Do I need a large enterprise data warehouse to truly run my business? I'm here to tell you the answer is yes. Everyone here in this room, if you don't already have one, I guarantee you in the next eight to 10 years, everyone here will have it. And let me show you what it has done to my company. So first off, let me get a, a raise of hands. How many people know who Catalina Marketing is? I am amazed. Usually I get one. We are a marketing company that does the worst job of marketing ourselves on the face of the earth. The old joke about the cobbler's kids or any of that, we are it. For those of you that, again, live with people in your marketing department, you know the worst, chance, uh, the worst challenge that an IT person has is marketing people. They can dream up more crazy things that you have yet to build than anybody on the face of the earth. I have two strikes. I work for a marketing company. I have 180 marketing people trying to come up with better ideas to make the other guys look bad. We actually were founded in 1983, as you see from the slide. We actually were based here in Southern California. The company name actually comes from Catalina Island. Um, <coughs> we started on a back of a napkin at Avalon Bay. The company has grown over the past 25 years. We're now a privately held organization by Heldman and Friedman. Heldman and Friedman, of course, many of you here in the area know them. They are the guys that bought and sold DoubleClick. So they made a few dollars off of that. We have over 50,000 retail stores installed throughout the US and international. Most of those are in the supermarket and mass retailer, and it's the who's who. Many of you here in the room are clients of our company. You see us, I just happen to have an example, you see us in the form of a coupon or a promotion that is delivered to you at the point of sale. We invented that concept 27 years ago, and today it basically is our organization. We deliver that in a number of different solutions. First off, we do it in the form of an incentive or promotion at the point of sale. But we also deliver that through a number of other services, including internet transactions, mobile email programs, and of course, continuing on down the line. Our goal is to communicate to consumers in the most appropriate manner at the right location to get you to change your behavior. That simple. And everyone here in the room knows if you know what people are doing, you can market to them more appropriately. So I thought first, let's go see what what is big data? Because I get asked that all the time. So I went to the who's who, the guys that know everything. I went to Wikipedia. What do they say big data is? As you see, there's two definitions. The first is basically it's large data sets that have a challenge with companies and how they're going to utilize that information. But really, big data is all relative to the company. What is big data to Catalina may be huge data to you guys. What is large data to you or big data to you may be, again, comparative to other companies. It is really a, a differentiation between organizations and how you're going to use that information. But from Catalina, what do we think it is? Simply put, it means in our case, you've got hundreds of billions of rows of data, multiple terabytes of information, but the key item, the key item I leave you with, is it changes frequently. That is the number one draw, the number one challenge that companies are having with large data sets. So suffice it to say, when we call out big data, or if you have an organization that says, I have big data, I guarantee you they've already had problems. Because big data requires a number of other things. And I really want to focus on some of those challenges that both we have and other companies that I've talked to in the marketplace have had managing large data sets. 
First off, let me set the stage of Catalina. Who are we? You've got that. What do we actually have in our place? I am not here to promote one appliance over another, but we were one of the very first companies to utilize data warehousing appliances about seven and a half years ago. We currently have about 2.6 terabyte terabytes worth of storage on the floor. We utilize primarily the Natiza technology, which is, now, of course, now owned by IBM. You've heard a number of companies here earlier this morning. You're going to hear throughout the next several days of other companies that are all very much into the data warehousing world. They're all acquiring other companies. It absolutely is becoming the core stone of all corporations on what's there. We have 1.2 trillion rows of fact data. How many of you in the room here eat in their market? They go into the grocery stores in the US market. Everybody, right? You all eat. Congratulations, you're in my database. Catalina manages the information sets of about 200 million people, about 75% of all grocery purchases made in the US marketplace every single day. If you use a loyalty card or any other identifier at any of the major supermarkets or mass merchants, that's loaded into our information. The largest of the tables, as you see, is about 60 terabytes that's there. That data is refreshed every single day. About 600 million rows of data are unduplicated in one database every day. People ask me also, well, how do you get to this? You put all this information in there, how do you get to it? We do use a who's who of information standards. Again, I'm not here to promote one company over another. They're absolutely best of breed in a number of different categories that are out there. We happen to use SAS for our statistical services. We use MicroStrategy for a lot of our reporting and, and visual communications. Actually, out to an iPad uh, device. Our sales teams actually have iPads and can actually bring up information real time from an iPad device. We also use the Oracle Brio product that Oracle picked up from Hyperion. Um, so again, does a lot of our financials. But again, again, not here to promote one versus another. There's a lot of different technologies out there. What I really want to spend a few minutes on is to describe what do we do with it? Why does it make our company different? And that really is a key example. There are, I'm sure, a number of you here in the room that come from the uh, consumer packaged goods companies, people such as Procter & Gamble and Nestle and Kraft and, Co and Coke and on down the line. Those are our clients. The retailers really are our partners, and we play a mediator role between them, providing you as our consumers with information that we believe would be appropriate to the purchase information that we have on you. One example of that that I put up here is from Nestle. As you see, Nestle happens to own the Coffee Mate product. They have two basic products, one Coffee Mate, the other one is their International Delight. So they came to Catalina, and of course we've been doing programs with them for many, many years, but they said, you know guys, what we really want to do is we want to find people that are purchasing milk, but they use it to lighten their coffee, not to just drink it. So how do you go and find customers that purchase milk to use for their coffee? Therefore, they could provide an offer to that individual to be able to say, hey, there's a better offering for you to be able to do that. This is where data mining, and I am a purist on data mining, so let me make sure that I set the stage on data mining. Data mining to Catalina means that I have a supersized data set that I provide to a computer, and it comes back and gives me information that I didn't even think to ask it. That is different than OLAP reporting, where I want to run an information set. So again, I'm going to set up a, pe a, a piece of information, have the computer come back and tell me some interesting things about it that I didn't know. So what we do is we ran this. This actually was done about four years ago for the Nestle organization. We went out and used a piece of technology that we invented called behavior-activated research. Most of you here in the room have seen this technology in operation. You didn't know that where it came from. But you see it in the form of you go shopping in a store, and at the bottom of the receipt tape that's handed back to you, it says, if you'd like to win free groceries, you want to do something like that, call this 1-800 number and answer some questions. We invented that concept, we utilized that such that we could print an offer for free groceries to consumers that bought milk. So you bought milk in your transaction, we communicate a message. The message would say something simple. Get $10 in free groceries if you'll call a 1-800 number and ask some, some basic questions. When you do that, that number that was, on, that was printed on it was a PIN number unique to you. It allowed our computers to link your behavioral data to your attitudinal data such that we could understand what you think about products and what you actually did. 
So with that, we were able to mass a set of consumers that answered the question, because of course it was in there, do you use milk to lighten your coffee? Those that did became the sample set, put that against the system, now I could find consumers, put that in place, what did that mean to the business? If we had done this on a generic aspect, gone out to the marketplace and said, give me all the consumers that I think, based on milk purchases, would be interested in this, best case, 12%. Best case. In reality, it's much less than that. Because of data mining technology, it's allowed our company to provide this kind of information to our clients, and you can see the scores that are out there. On a 10% model, if you're going after the top 10%, it's an 84% confidence rate that the consumers that are there that will be interested in this particular product. Now, I'm not guarantee you're going to like their product, but I can at least make sure that the offer that's provided to you is something that would be of interest to you. So if you look at where Catalina was five years ago, and I'll say this slide actually comes, we have 70 full-time statisticians, several PhDs that do nothing but build models in our company. Predictive analytics is our business. It's exactly what we're ending up doing. Five years ago, they were doing this on a PC. As you see, about 100,000 IDs, about uh, 1 million records on down the line. Today, 100 million IDs, 1.5 trillion records, 800 terabytes worth of information sets on down the line. The key point, though, look at the time. The speed of the information set has transitioned our organization. What used to take six weeks to select the predictive models, for those of you that actually know anything about uh, analytics that's here in the room, you'll know that most statisticians like to get between a 10 and a 20% sample set. 180 million people, 10% is 18 million records. And that's just for one product. You take it across the line, it's staggering. So again, we've been able to take six weeks, four weeks, six weeks, as you see in the slide, down to in reality, we can do that in less than three days. The same number of statisticians that used to take weeks to do a program are now generating, and this, this slide is slightly dated, you'll see it's 2010. This year they will generate over 1,000 models and execute them all in almost real-time cases, and that is our next goal. We're t our goal is to take this truly real-time based upon the data that's happening in those stores instantaneously against this information set. That has changed our business to a point that IT is not only the seat at the table, we drive those meetings. Because our marketing people are coming in, how can you do this better? How can you do that faster in our business? I want to leave you with four areas that I would recommend to all of you here in the room that are contemplating the idea of, of putting together a very large enterprise data warehouse. Because most of you here probably have at least some enterprise information sets. You may not have put it together. Others have way down the line and have a very large information set at their position. Key things, though, to keep about, and that is that there are a tremendous number of mainstream companies that are looking at services. There is not a one-size-fits-all. Again, I am not here to promote one technology over another. It depends on how your business operates, your company operates, on which one will be most effective for your operation. But you can see the interest level, and I will take a bit of a, a, a contrary view to the comments that were made earlier today. While there's 85% of the data in the market that is, uh, that is non-structured, I'll buy that. I will tell you that most companies in this room are probably worried with how I can do better with structured data. How can I get more information in the hands of my users than the, structured, than the unstructured information? That is going to move, and I agree with them, that they're going to move very rapidly. But today, the challenges are, how do I handle that structured data? I will tell you one of the biggest challenges Catalina had and still has to this day is not the appliances that are allowing us to have this information sets. It's all of the tools and services that connect to them. It has changed and is causing still to this day challenges in our organization. ETL, how are you going to move this? Again, I made comments earlier, 600 million rows a day. You don't just do that off the case. And I'll tell you, companies like Informatica and others have revolutionized their products to be able to keep up with the vast, uh, vast quantities of data that's coming along. Look for linear scalability. Most of these companies will tell you, oh, absolutely, my system will scale infinitely. Well, will it really? Find out what's there. Workspace. Most people forget. You think about any of you that came from the database arena as you've moved up your, your uh, processes in, in, your, um, uh, in your heritage in your company. Those of you that, again, come from that heritage know that workspace is one of the critical items. 
How do you do that when you have a 600 to 100 terabyte warehouse? Does that mean you have to have multiple copies? How do you do the scalability? How do your DBAs accommodate those kind of things? And one of the biggest challenges is I have a lot of companies that come to me and say, hey, did you guys use the same people that did your Windows SQL kind of services years ago, and did you just move them into the Linux world? No. Comment was made earlier, the people that are one of the biggest challenges in the marketplace, and I will agree with it, it's talent. Finding the right people. For me to find people out in the marketplace that know how to manage large data sets, they are few and far between. They are critical. A couple of important things to keep in mind. What about the resilience of the data? Does it change? Answer is yes. How do you move that kind of volume of data around when you're going to be talking about movements in your information set? Again, as I mentioned a minute ago, what about the staffing? Am I prepared to take this particular piece on? And do you understand what it's going to be for the workload that changes in your company? There are much different techniques that are needed to handle the kind of volume data that we're talking about as compared to traditional um, OLTP environments or even OLAP environments in small-scale services. It will change your company and what goes on. Some of the challenges, I mentioned a few of these. Backup and recovery, business continuity, replication, workspace. How are you going to handle those kind of pieces that are there? Again, these companies that walk in, they'll say, hey, put this appliance on the floor, and I can handle all your data. What about all the services that go behind it? One of the big items we had was whether you needed to have a batch window to do this. So I need to take the services down. There are trade-offs. Most of the appliance vendors out there will tell you they can do concurrent loads and reads. Yes, they can, but there's an overhead cost to do that. Are you willing to absorb that time frame when those processes are happening into your businesses? In summary, there really is a tremendous proliferation in the marketplace. You're seeing it with IBM, EMC, Dell, HP, um, Oracle, all buying technologies to build into their companies. The proliferation of EDWs into the marketplace is at a staggering pace. And I, again, for those of you who are in the room, if you don't have one today, I will guarantee you will have one in the near future. A key thing within Catalina, and this is an interesting piece that I would have never guessed. You know, people ask me, what, what do you see today that you would have never guessed five years ago? I would have never believed that my marketing and sales and my CEO know what speed of information means to the business. We literally have our financial planning and analysis team that have helped us quantify a reduction in speed. In other words, a query that used to take me 30 seconds, if it now takes me 20 seconds, they know what that means to the bottom line of this company. They are pushing hard for us to get to a truly real time because they know what that's going to mean to this organization. What are the headaches from pushing it? We've seen them. The huge challenges that have gone out in the marketplace. The big piece, though, that you're going to find is that all of your staff is not willing to go there. It's going to be a big change for them. And when you really move the, the, the business around, their appetite for data is going to be staggering. We put together a center of excellence for our business intelligence team. That group has completely grown. It's become almost the key cornerstone of all information for our organization. And lastly, there really is a, a hidden infrastructure cost for managing this. Many people don't think about it. Let's go buy a, buy a box, let's go buy a Teradata and a Teza on down the line, put it in, and that's going to answer my questions. No, it won't. Tremendous amount of overhead and throughput that has to be put in place to make that happen. So, in summary, I leave this with you. You've seen this in the fun house at the fair. Once you enter, there is no going back. I couldn't go back to our company today and say, hey, guys, you really don't need that information. You really don't need it that fast. Their push to get it faster and faster and faster to be the leads in the marketplace is changing our company today as much as it did five years ago. So with that, I leave you with the idea, enterprise data warehousing, big data, it's in your future. If it's not already, it'll be there soon. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.